Hello, this is Justin at the Tech Train here again. About five years ago, back in December of 2015, I created a video about how to create a word cloud in Microsoft Word, and it used an add-in that you could use for free within Microsoft Word itself. It's a very popular video. It's had about half a million views. However, the problem is that the add-in is no longer available. So that video, unfortunately, is no longer going to work. Work. So what I want to do in this video is to show four other ways in which you can create a word cloud and then bring that into Word or into PowerPoint or whatever program you want to use. Unfortunately, there's no currently uh, no add-in that you can use, but these four websites I think are really good. In fact, I think the results are going to be better than they were using the original plugin. So here are the four for you. The first one is not my favorite. It's a simple one, it's straightforward, no real frills. Um, so stick with me because some of these do look really, really good. This is just simply the also ran that I'll cover first. Uh, but it's, it's quick and simple. It's uh, monkeylearn.com and it's their word cloud generator. I've copied the text from uh, the whole of the first chapter of Alice in Wonderland. So what I'm gonna do is paste that into here. Let's just go and copy that paste it into here, there we go. Or you can upload a text file as you can see here. No other options really other than that. Click Generate Cloud and there we go. Now there are a few uh, things that you can change with this of course, the appearance. Uh, so at the top here you've got things like the um, themes. So you've got different themes here, looking for dark, vivid, there we go. Um, the colors, so we can click on the color here and change some of the colors if you wanted to. So let's go um, and change the uh, yellow for a, a green color perhaps, like that. Uh, we can see that immediately updates. Uh, we've got the fill color, which is the background there, so we can uh, make that white if you wanted to, or transparent, as you can see there. Uh, transparent would be good if you want to put it across uh, your own background, perhaps in PowerPoint. Uh, let's just set that to a darker color again so that we can see this more clearly. There we go. Uh, you've got the font, of course, on the right-hand side that you can change, um, and uh, the number of words that actually appear, so we can increase that to make it slightly more um, inclusive of some of the other words. A little bit of interest on the right-hand side there with some of the um, relevance. So you can see here we've got different words, and we can sort those by relevance or frequency, uh, which might be of, of some interest. But that's it. Uh, then you've got the download button at the top right corner, and you can download this as an image file to then include into Word. So I think it's useful, it's nice. Um, it's not the best one by any stre uh, stretch of the uh, imagination, but it's worth mentioning, I think, uh, certainly. So that's the first one. Uh, number two, which uh, I think is really good, is wordclouds.com. So this one here has a lot more going for it. Uh, looks quite straightforward and simple still, uh, but there's a lot of power hidden in these buttons on the top, so don't ignore it uh, just because it looks simple to begin with. We start off with the file, and straight away you can see what a, a lot of options we've got here. Um, you can paste text, so if you've copied it, you can paste it in there. You can also um, open text files that you've got on your computer, as well as opening web pages, so you can pull data from a web page and also from uh, Microsoft Office documents or PDFs. So that's quite useful. I'm gonna choose the paste text. So I'm gonna paste the Alice in Wonderland chapter one into there and click apply. And you can see that you get quite a comprehensive um, word cloud there. And you can see that it's in a shape and that is something that it also allows you to do. So this button here, shape, it has um, quite a few different options uh, for you. So we can uh, choose different letters. Uh, we can choose colors. Let's go for a basic one. Let's go for the cat, perhaps Cheshire cat. Um, and you can see then we've got that as a chat, I think. Uh, let's go for a, for a diamond, a diamond, because of course we had diamonds, uh, the cards, didn't we, in, in Alice in Wonderland, there we are. Um, you can also see that within shape, you've got the upload option, so you can actually upload your own shape and have that in there. So if you have a logo or letters, that works quite well as well. Um, so you've got other uh, options along here, theme, uh, you've got some built-in themes, a bit like Microsoft uh, Office, so built-in themes for uh, colors there. Uh, you can choose your own color though, so you can have your own background, gradients, um, I think you can have transparent, these colors here. So you've obviously got built-in themes or custom colors if you want to. 
Uh, the font, so you've got different options for font here, quite a lot. Uh, so let's go for let's go for that one, nice and bold. We'll choose that. So you can change the font to one of a whole range. So it does get quite busy with all the smaller words around the outside here. To make it more re um, more readable, we can increase the size between the words. Uh, so that uh, makes a little bit of a difference. Uh, you've also got the direction of words. So uh, at the moment it's quite random. If you wanted them all to be horizontal, you can do that. Um, we can also, um, where was that one? Direction of words, we can have uh, diagonal going across like that, which works quite well for a diamond, I suppose. So you've got different directions for the words, which I quite like. Invert actually allows us to have the shape in the middle as gap and then the words around the outside. Now imagine that would be a really good background for a PowerPoint presentation. If you were to have a gap in the middle and have these all around the outside or a logo in the middle and have the words around the outside, that would be quite a good way of doing a background, I think, in, in PowerPoint. So that would be quite good. Um, so we can then switch the inside outside. What that does is puts the smaller words in the middle and the bigger words around the outside. Or if we go back from invert, you can see there we've got the smaller words in the middle, bigger words around the outside. So that's what invert does. Um, you've got mask feature as well. So you can actually see the mask if you wanted to. Um, I don't tend to do that, I think. Um, but there we are. You've got the uh, font, the size of the image as well there. So I can change that size. So you've got that tiny, tiny text there. Let's go big. There we are. So now the words are quite large. It's a bit simpler to see, um, but it's also now got fewer words, of course, as well. So I think I'm going to bring that down slightly, down to about there, perhaps. And there we go. I think that looks really, really good. So this here allows us to save this. So we can save that as an image. Uh, we can save that as a high definition image. Um, you can also share it and you see it also allows you to then open that in um, photoeditor.com or postermaker.com as well um, and save that. So that's a really, really good um, website. I think that's probably my favorite. I like this one a lot. I think it has a lot of potential. Um, well, let's look at number three now. So word art, uh, com. So this one looks really, really basic and simple. Let's click create now. Um, this is simpler, so um, there's still a lot to it, but let's have a little look at how this works. So to begin with, we can um, import our words. So this one here allows you to have uh, basic text, either that you uh, paste from Excel or use CSV or just paste in the text as I'm doing now. So click import. Um, that then brings up this quite nice little table, which is a, a good touch. It shows you actually how many times those words appear within the text. So Alice appears 27 times, very 23 times and so forth. So that's quite interesting. Rabbit uh, there eight times. Uh, once you've got the word list in there, and you can edit that if you wanted to, you can add or remove these words. If you click the visualize button, the red visualize button, then it will process that. It's a little bit slower than the other one, but there you are. You see, you've got quite a nice sort of um, uh, shape there, which uh, we can change down here in the shape section. So I think probably uh, you can search for this as well. You can add your own image. They're in categories. So that's quite nice. And there are also colors. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of things. First of all, I think Tweedledum and Tweedledee had this uh, little kind of um, helicopter type hat. So if I click on that one, I'll choose that one. Nothing updates. We have to then click visualize again once we've made that change. So again, it's a little bit slower, but the result of this one, you see now it has the shape, but it also has the colors from that shape as well. So we've actually got the, the words colored within it, which I think looks really, really good. I like that a lot. Um, so let's just pick another one at random. Let's go down. I think, have we got a diamond in here? I think we've got a diamond. No, apparently we don't have a diamond. We can add a diamond, but I'm not going to worry about that now. Let's just add any other one. There we are. We'll add that hexagon there, or pentagon rather, with all the colors. So again, we click visualize. And there we go. So there we are. We've got this nice colored um, image there. So I think it looks really good. It's basic in, in many ways. You've got options for font. Um, you've got the layout. Uh, so again, similar to the previous one, you can choose whether they are going to be at different angles or whatever. Um, and the style. So again, you've got different colors, background color. We can make that transparent uh, so that we can then put that into PowerPoint over something. Let's click visualize again, see what that looks like. 
and there we go. So now we've got the font change, we've got the angles change, we've got these colors here. Um, and then we can uh, take that, I think we can save it. So we've got a menu up here. Um, so we can sign up and save it. You can also um, save this as, so we can save that. I think you do need to have an account on this one, although I can print it to a PDF, so that would work. Um, so I think it's a really, it's got some really good potential there. I just think uh, it's a little bit slow sometimes, um, but I think it's some positives. And if that works for you, then brilliant. Let's look at the fourth one then. And this is, I think, more for children than, than for anything really. It's a really friendly one, but quite fun. So this is abcya.com and I'll put the links by the way in the description below. So I'm gonna click this play button underneath and then click start. So quite a kind of friendly little beginning. Uh, I'm gonna click and paste. There's no other option here. You just have to paste your text in so you can't import it using CSV or anything like that one. And then we click the create button at the top right. Uh, right, we've got too many words in this one, but it's gonna just simply really truncate it and choose as many as it can. So there we are, we can see we've got that uh, word cloud in the middle there. Uh, let's start to play around with this. So we can click on the uh, layout. Let's go for a pentagon. Uh, in fact, I actually probably had already done a pentagon. Let's choose something else then. Let's choose a heart, there we go. Uh, one of the things you'll notice is it does animate it. So it's um, playing around with the animation, which again for children is probably gonna be quite fun, but uh, not particularly relevant. So I'm gonna change the font there, and there we go. Uh, we can change the colors. Again, we've got things like themes on there, but you can also change your own color. Uh, we can randomize it. Uh, we can choose the number of words that appear in the word cloud. So I've pasted in, I don't know how many words, but if I choose say 50, uh, then it's gonna reduce the number of words. So it's taking the top 50 words now from my list, which means of course that these words now are larger than the ones before. We have got one or two little oddities. I see the uh, letter S there by itself rather than as a word. So I, I think what it does is it looks at the, the apostrophe. We've got a letter T in the middle here as well. So it looks at the apostrophe and then takes that as a letter. So it's not perfect. I think this is more for children to use than for uh, more professional use perhaps. But we can save that um, and uh, edit it, print it, whatever. So it's got some good potential. Out of all of them, I think definitely my favorite one is the wordcloud.com. I think that's really, really good. Um, I would say that my number two is probably the wordart.com. Uh, and then I think the others all have their suitable places. So I hope that was uh, useful and I hope this um, helps to um, patch the gap that uh, unfortunately the withdrawer of the plugin has caused from the original video. Um, but there we are. If I've missed off a word cloud generator that you like using, that you would recommend, please do leave a comment below um, and we'll have a look at some of the recommendations that other people might have. If you liked these and you've created a word cloud, it'd be fantastic if you could link to it perhaps in the comments below so we can see your word cloud. That'd be really good to see some practical examples. Um, and if you have any questions or comments at all, do leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, please do click the like button. That does genuinely make a real difference to the channel. So thank you for that. And of course, if you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to do so before you go. So thank you very much indeed for watching and I'll see you in a future video. Bye for now.